It is, I think, reasonable to expect that there's going to be some seasonal fluctuation to this coronavirus, like many respiratory viruses. It's a little speculative. In the laboratory, the virus does tend to do worse, to survive less long and uh, not to be as viable when you have warmer temperature and higher humidity. So in terms of conditions for replication and survival, warmer and wetter is harder on the virus. Cooler and drier are more conducive to the virus growing. So the degree to which environmental contamination may play a part in the transmission would also tend to favor cooler, drier months. When people are indoors, they're probably touching the same surfaces even more regularly and more often. So the net of this is we can't be sure what's going to happen. If the summer months create conditions where the virus can continue to spread at a very low rate, in effect to stay below the radar, but to seed many more geographic areas, even than are affected today, that's not a good recipe because that could mean in the fall and winter months, we're going to see escalations in many different places happening at the same time. So we have to maintain our vigilance, certainly through the summer with this new and dangerous virus. With luck, we'll be in a much stronger position by the fall than we were this spring to have adequate testing as a part of the response. And without testing, without a unified structure, without the capacity to do the contact tracing and follow up, uh, there really was no way that this virus could be absolutely defeated. It may be held back by our physical distancing. It may be deterred, but it is not defeated. How each country deals with that contact tracing is going to be, I think, a very important differentiator between those who are successful and those who are less successful.